Hello and welcome to Health Bites. Health Bites is brought to you by the Public Health Unit of the Ministry of Health and Social Development. I'm your host, Public Health Communications Specialist Natasha Letsom Humphrey. Today, we continue our conversations around domestic violence awareness. We have with us our reigning Miss BVI for 2022, Miss Jarena Penn. Welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for having me today. It is a pleasure and you look lovely. Thank you, thank you. So, (laughs) So, as you know, uh, we're trying to raise awareness to domestic violence issues. We have Domestic Violence Awareness Month going on where we're trying to sensitize the community, uh, you know, relating to various domestic issues. Um, How important do you think that is for the community? I think it's very, very important because it is a topic that needs to be talked about. It is not something that you just go about and think is like regular or don't hold it to a higher standard because it's very serious. People lose their life to it, and I feel like we need to be the voice for them. Definitely. And as you know, um, domestic violence covers, you know, a broad spectrum. Um, Last week, we had our gender affairs coordinator on the program. And, you know, she was talking about um, physical, emotional, financial, sexual abuse. And, you know, the theme this year is everyone knows one, so help one, because domestic violence really does touches a broad spectrum of persons. We talked about, you know, impact on children, impact on the elderly. So it's definitely a lot. Um, I know that you came on the program today to share your story. And, you know, we want to applaud you for your bravery to to come on. So I will give you this opportunity now to tell me your survival story. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story because I feel like it needs to be heard by the community because it's very serious. Um, My first encounter with it, well, my encounter was sexual assault. So the first time that happened to me was at a very young age, I think I was four, four living in St. Kitts. But my first time here in the BVI when it happened, I was seven. So throughout my years of growing up, I've had different encounters with different people that I've trusted or that I felt like I could trust or that were very close to me. And it could be, that's just to show you, it could be the person that you trust the most that could end up doing these stuff to you. It's not somebody that's outside that would more so do it, but somebody that's really close to you, somebody that knows your actions, how you emote, how you go about your day. So it's like when that encounter happened to me at seven years old, these are two persons that I trusted and were very like they were very present in my life and was around me very very often so for that to happen it kind of took a toll on me mm-hmm. but over the years i found like ways i could deal with it and how i could help myself like get over it i have forgiven them and stuff like that but it's like the inner work still needs to be done and i've gotten to a place where i'm keep, i'm able to like really deal with it and talk about it where it doesn't affect me anymore Mm -hmm. wow sorry to hear about that um but happy to know that at a tender age you know you are able you were able to grow um to where you are now you're reigning you know queen miss bvi and you know you're so brave to come on the program and and share with us can can you mind if i ask you a couple questions basically so uh, i said it happened to you twice Mm -hmm. um once away once here four and seven as a tender, those those are very tender ages. So yeah. how did that experience impact you during those formative years growing up into teen? Well, it did make my trust in people. I did have a lack in trust. And I found it very hard to open up to people because I felt like if I did, persons were going to betray me and then just use my trust as something to use for something else. So it's like... I wasn't sure of on the intent of how people would come to me and approach me. So one thing that I saw that would help me like get over those kind of feelings was dance. I showed my emotion to dance. I was in cheerleading in high school, the Lady Rams cheerleaders, and I also did dance outside of it. I'm currently in Elevated Dance Company where it widens my versatility, like my genres in dance and how I could do different things and educate myself on like different genres in dance so I would say my favorite like genre is contemporary because I notice with that 
my emotions, what I can't say physically with my mouth, I say physically with my body. And over the years, I've learned to build on that because it is my passion. And I use that. I also would write out how I'm feeling as well and read it back to myself. Because the first thing I had to notice in this situation is that it's not my fault. And that's one thing that really messed with me during those times. I thought it was my fault. But over time, you have to realize it's not. And you can't hold yourself accountable for something that somebody else done to you because it's their fault it was there something in their head told them this was something they wanted to do not you asking for it so that's what I had to like overcome and yes with the writing it out and reading it back to myself that really helped because it's not like I'm bottling it up inside Mm -hmm. and dance also helped me with that as well so that's why it's something really big in my life and something that I'm I feel is very important to me. Definitely. And and how did you know to do that? Did you have counseling? What caused you to channel that inner, you know, confusion, anger, aggression, whatever it is that you felt bottled up inside into something so positive that was, you know, really instrumental in helping you to get past that? I actually did do counseling throughout the years. I did. I did some hair with... I'm not sure if it's okay for me to say his name, but I will say it. Dr. Turner, he was one of the counselors that I went to and I spoke to about things that were going on because it did lead to me becoming suicidal. I did have those thoughts. And I'm saying this now because it's very important. I'm speaking to the community right now. It is very important that you listen or look out for signs of suicidal because people could be out here with the happiest of face and inside they could really be thinking on these type of stuff and i don't want you guys to see it happen and make a joke out of it or take it as a laughing matter because it's very very serious Mm -hmm. so with that i did talk to him about it and it helped me kind of like figure out where i wanted to move for with these things happening. I spoke to my coach, Miss Bianca Dugan. She also helped me with these type of stuff. And she's like a second mother to me. So with her knowing what was going on, she helped me kind of like push those emotions into chair, into dance, because she's really big in my life with that part. So it was very easy for me to like transition and let that emotion just flow throughout my dancing. So that was really, that was really like the stepping stone for me at that point in time, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you told people. Yeah. So out the gate, you told a parent or a guardian, and, and how did they respond to that? I wouldn't say I told it out the gate. It would be certain things would happen where it led to little hints being thrown at them, but I didn't openly say what happened to me until... It was a point in time I was living in St. Kitts and my aunt, she found one of my journals where I would be writing out what happened to me. And she immediately like showed it to my mom and then is when she found out about it. So at that point in time, I had no choice but to say anything. I didn't feel like I was ready as yet, but after saying something, it did feel like a weight was lifted off of my shoulder. So... That is how she came to find out, and that is how like I trusted saying something immediately instead of just hiding it. Mm-hmm. And then what was your mom's reaction, and, and, and how did, I mean, did she believe you? What, what happened with that conversation? Well, then? she immediately believed me. Good. I'm my mom's only child, and anything that I come to and I tell her about, she's automatically going to believe me because she has my back just like how I have her back. Mm-hmm. She would not, like, she would not listen to something like that and be like, no, this this could never happen to my child because it's something very seriously mm-hmm. and you can't just hear it and ignore it. So I'm glad that my mom believed me. There are some people out there that are not fortunate for their parents or anybody else to believe them. That is why I'm trying to make it comfortable for people to come out because I want to be that voice for them. Mm-hmm. When they don't feel like they could be that voice, let me be the voice for you. So I'm just trying to make sure that everybody know that it is not something to be ashamed of. You have, just speaking about it gives you extra strength. Mm-hmm. 
And that's what I found in myself after speaking about it. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's true because a lot too too often we keep things silent. Mm -hmm. And because we keep things silent, we keep all our emotions bottled up and they're expressed in various ways. You know, um, a lot of times people who have been violated sexually, you find, you know, as they grow up into their teens and young adult, adult years, either, you know, is is either they they are very promiscuous Mm -hmm. or they are very afraid. It's like, it's one extreme to another because they haven't, you know, had that that output that you had, that mm-hmm. that that counseling, that you know, support from your family members. Mm-hmm. So, what would you say are some of the lessons that you have learned through that ordeal? And what would you like to share with the community, or you know, other girls, or you know, in this this day and age we're living with, in living in boys too are being you know sexually yeah. assaulted and stuff. What what would you like? To I actually say? love the fact that you you touched on the fact that boys are actually affected by these things as well and i feel it's very important that we talk about that because people hear these things and they just stigmatize it to one gender but it's a wide variety men get this done to them like little boys are out there dealing with these type of stuff as well and it's not something that we need to ignore and just keep it to one gender because it is a wide wide variety of people dealing with these type of stuff And I feel like things that I went through and how I took the steps in order to help myself heal, I feel like just by writing it out, going to a counselor, don't be afraid to talk to somebody about this because you will see in the long run, it will really, really help and benefit you as a person in this society. You're not too old to talk about it. You're not too young because this this thing does not have an age on it. It could happen at any age. Even a young baby that just came into the world, they could easily be dealt with this. Like, it's not, sorry. sorry. It's okay, no, it's okay, sweetie. go ahead. It's, I just want you guys to really take it seriously. Don't take it as a joke because people really are afraid to come out when they see people are not like, holding it to the standard it needs to be held to because they feel like if they come out then you guys are not going to take it seriously you guys are just going to put it behind your back and not give this person the attention or the help that they need and that is something that is very serious so with it i would say yes talk to somebody even if it's not a counselor find somebody that you're comfortable with sharing that Mm -hmm. and go from there is not a correct way to deal with it. You know yourself how it's best for you to deal with something. So even if it works for me, it might not work for you. Find something that works for you and it and you could see results happening from that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And earlier in the program, I, I definitely have to go back to that. You touched on you having suicidal thoughts. And um, in speaking with some of our mental health professionals, that is an undertone issue here in the BVI um, where we've had persons committed suicide before. Mm-hmm. And th- that is definitely something that's going on, but we don't hear about it. We don't speak about it. Um, so I'm glad that you brought it up. And I want us to talk a little bit about that because um, too often we go inside ourselves mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and one thing about a thought, when you have a bad one, a million more bad okay, thoughts come, will yes. come to you. That's why it's so important to keep it positive. But um, if, if, if early up you, you spoke to people, you had access to counseling, why did you still have suicidal thoughts? I feel like with me talking to people, yes, it was helping. But when you're by yourself and then those thoughts tend to come, it's like... You have to know, take into what these counselors are saying to you to kind of help with it. But then sometimes they do, the bad thoughts do overpower what you're going through and what you've been given, like the foundation that you've been given to like help yourself. So I did find points in time where those thoughts did really, they really like overpowered what I was going through. And it's like you get so far into it that you feel like the only way out is just to harm yourself, Mm -hmm. which is not the answer. I guarantee you it is not the answer. Even to this day, 
I still have points in time where those things happen to me, but I have to remember that life is amazing. Life is something that you cannot just take for granted. It is something that God gave you. God blessed you with life. He blessed you to wake up every morning and do something that you love. And for me, I will go back and say, for me, dance is something that I really, really love. And just being able to wake up and do that, that's generally all that's worth it to me. Mm -hmm. And I just want you guys to honestly understand where I'm coming from with that. Once you find something that you love and you hold on to that, the bad thoughts, they could never win. For me, they could never win once you have that. I love that. I love that. And that is very important for a listening and uh, viewing audience to really realize um, your thoughts, you control that. Yep. So what I'm hearing from you is that you choose. Yes. You made a choice to push your thoughts from being negative to positive. To positive using what your experience to help grow your character, mm -hmm. to help assist other persons in need. Yep. And not to basically lament on the things of the past that you cannot change. All you could do is learn from it. So that is a key lesson here, ladies and gentlemen. We need to take more ownership on the thoughts that we allow to resonate with us. Yes, sometimes you might get a thought, but you know, you, you wasn't really thinking that and then a thought popped into your head and then all of a sudden you're on a tangent with this thought yeah. that basically just popped into your head. So we have to be thought watchers. Mm -hmm. And you know, when, when a pot negative thought comes, you eradicate that, replace it with a positive thought and, and try to carry your, your, your thoughts in a more positive Maybe. direction. So did you, did you make any attempts? I did. You did? I have made attempts. And I have the scars to prove that I made attempts as well. Um, but I look at them. To this day, I look at them and I say to myself, this was a very real point in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let it define me. It is something that showed like true strength in me. And if I was like weak-minded, maybe one of those attempts might have taken me for real. But... I know that there's something greater in store for me and I honestly just letting God handle everything. I look at them, to this day I look at them and it's like, wow. Where you came from. Yeah, wow. That's all I could say, wow. Cause it's amazing to see how far I've come. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm grateful for everything that I've gotten, every opportunity that I've gotten so far is like, could never take anything for granted. I love that. And I heard you said earlier that you forgive yeah. um, your the perpetrators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what level of strength did that take? That took a lot. <laughs> it took a lot. I guess just by me, because I did have conversations with the people, with the persons involved, and I did have the opportunity of them saying they were sorry. So that, I guess that kind of like helped knowing that they own up to something that they did and know I could guarantee or be reassured in that they're not going to do something else like that because I had that conversation with them and I told them how much it impacted me. So that, that really like just having a conversation with them and hearing them out is kind of like what led to me forgiving them. And I also knew that not forgiving them was kind of holding me back. It was keeping me back a step from healing. So when I noticed that, it's like, hey, you can't keep this. You can't keep this in your heart. Because if you do, you're just holding yourself back. Mm -hmm. And was that conversation initiated by you or them? It was initiated by me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, that is, I mean, a lot of people in your position wouldn't have that maturity, mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't have that control, because if you get a chance to look at the perpetrator and they come and they tell you some story or, or whatever it is, you know, you, I can see how that, yeah, that could go. I can see it too. <laughs> yeah, but for you to be able to sit through that not once but twice, you are definitely, truly a strong, like you said, a strong-minded individual. And a really wonderful, sweet, sweet soul. Thank you. So that that that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Anything else you want like to add? 
Mm-hmm. Right now, I would just like to speak to the public. Once you, if you've ever been through this or know somebody that's going through any domestic violence, please seek help. Even if they don't take it heads on, at least let them know that you're there or at least find someone that you're comfortable with speaking to about it. The, speaking about it is like the first step. Accepting that is not your fault is something that is really important as well. And I know a lot of people may struggle with that, but once you come to grips with the fact that it's not your fault, trust me, you'll be fine from there. So just take that into account of it. Wonderful, wonderful. We would like to thank so much, Ms. Jarena Penn, for coming on the program today and sharing me. with us such a powerful survival story. You just have, I mean, at this young age, I am just in awe of you right now because you're so mature, you're, you're, you're so focused, you have a lot of knowledge that most adults do not have. So you take that, you grow that, you share that, and you continue to blossom, young lady. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, it was a pleasure having you on the program today. And for our viewing and listening audience, remember this month is Domestic Violence Awareness. Um, Today is, what, the 6th? So on the 11th, we're going to have a government sensitization session for um, government employees. The link will be... The link for the program will be sent in your email. Then there's also a a run walk on the 15th, starting at 5 a.m. in that parking lot adjacent to Barbie's supermarket. On the 21st, we're going to paint the town purple. So that means, you know, wearing purple. We want you to wear a little hint of purple for the month, but for that day, we really want you to go all out in purple and red because we really need to raise awareness Um, That's on the 21st. And on the 25th and on the 27th, we're going to have self-defense classes. And that's going to be at the Tortola Judo Club, which is located right behind Island Paint Factory in Purcell, starting at 8.30 p.m. So that's the lineup for domestic violence awareness. And if you recall, um, the Gender Affairs Coordinator, Ms. Tara Sumorian, said that, you know, if you want their department to come out and talk about um, domestic violence at, at your organization, you can call them at 468-3415 to make an appointment. So basically, that's it for us today on Health Bites. And you know, we, you know, our theme for this year, everyone knows one, so help one. Definitely that help one, and that one person could be you, and never, never, ever let anything in life happen to you that you don't learn from that you can't share that you can't help others with i agree any final thoughts well i felt like i said all that there is to be said is just for you now the community to take in what i've said to you today and do with it what you please to mm-hmm. well thank you again miss penn thank you for having me no pleasure is mine reporting for the ministry of health and social development i am public health communications specialist natasha letson humphrey Thank you for tuning in.